Is it time to worry about future Social Security? Hi, it's financial planner Sean Mullaney. Let's discuss. And this is now becoming a financial planning issue. There are folks out there turning 50, turning 60, thinking about their retirement and thinking about Social Security claiming strategies and how that fits in with their financial life. And they're saying, wait a minute, I might not be able to claim Social Security or get all of it because of things like what was in the Washington Post recently. Uh, There's an article, I'm going to link to it in the description below, and it starts breathlessly like this. Social Security and Medicare will run out of money in just over a decade, a new report warned. Well, I'm here to tell you two things about that. One, that's incorrect. We'll get to that. And two, that applies a double standard. So why do I say the Washington Post is incorrect? Well, the report talks about the upcoming diminution of the Social Security Trust Fund. What's going on is this. Over the years, we've all paid FICA taxes, self-employment taxes to Social Security, and they've paid out annual benefits. And for many years in the not too distant past, those taxes exceeded the annual payouts to beneficiaries. And what they did was they said, well, we have a surplus. We'll loan that back to the rest of the federal government, the Pentagon, the folks who do the uh, vacuum cleaning at the White House, that sort of thing. And We'll take back uh, an IOU from the rest of the federal government, basically a government bond. And so right now, we've now gotten to a place where the annual tax revenue is less than the annual paid out benefits. But the Social Security Trust Fund, those IOUs more than make up the difference. Well, in 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years, something like that. These are just projections anyway, so don't get lost in that minutia. At some point, the trust fund will run out at which point Social Security will uh, have 70 to 80 percent of the annual uh, benefits uh, that need to be paid out coming in in FICA taxes and self-employment taxes. That is not running out of money, my friends, right? That's a shortfall. And this also gets now to the double standard that's involved, right? We never see from legacy media like the Washington Post, the headline, Defense Department out of money, right? But by the Washington Post logic, that headline should be screamed all over the Washington Post and other legacy media. Why do I say that? Well, Social Security, even in 10 years or so where it's got no trust fund, will be bringing in something like 70 or 80 percent of its annual payout. What about the Pentagon? The Pentagon's not going to bring in 70 or 80 percent, right? If the Pentagon's ancillary revenue, NATO fees, whatever they collect, it's something, it's not nothing, but it's nowhere near 70 or 80 percent. In fact, going back to the American Revolution, the, you know, the Washington Post would tell you that the Defense Department is out of money. But we never see that headline, but we see this about Social Security and Medicare, right? So um, I think uh, the legacy media is raising a whole lot of alarm that does not need to be raised. Now, let's think about the politics of this issue. And you say, well, wait a minute, this is a personal finance channel. Why are we talking politics? Well, the thing is, in personal finance, all we can do is assess what we think is going to happen in the future based on our analysis and our, you know, what we know and what we can intuit. And then we have to make financial decisions based on that. So we have to do some rudimentary political analysis. We're not going to split atoms here. But we start with the 2024 presidential election. And isn't it instructive that the three leaders in the polls in March in May 2024, uh, that would be Donald Trump, Joe Biden, and Robert F. Kennedy Jr., um, all three of them have not called for any sort of Social Security and Medicare cuts. Not that the politicians always get it right in terms of their own politics, but boy, isn't that instructive that a Republican, a Democrat, and an Independent, none of them have seized on, we're going to cut Social Security. That's very instructive in terms of where the politics of this issue lie. And we also have to think about sort of the intramural fights within the parties, right? That's how you rise to political power in the United States. You have to sort of win the intramural level in your own party. Let's look at the Republicans, right? Donald Trump is the only Republican who has won the presidency since the year 2004. Think about that for a second. Well, how does he compare to some of his some of the other Republicans, right? Think about the House Republicans. They came out for a proposal to delay collecting Social Security, which is cutting Social Security. 
Well, none of those House Republicans have any prayer of ever becoming President of the United States, generally speaking, while Donald Trump became President of the United States already and is now the polling frontrunner as of May 2024. Right. So we look at, well, how do you succeed in the Republican Party? It's not through advocating for Social Security, Medicare cuts. In fact, Donald Trump's been very vocal that he's not going to cut Social Security or Medicare. That's very instructive. And do we really think Democrats are that much different than Republicans on this issue? Do we really think, well, you know, Republicans love Social Security, but Democrats, they're all for cutting it. What? There's no data that would support that proposition. And then apply it to independents. If we think Republicans and Democrats support Social Security and Medicare and don't want any cuts, independents, there's no data that would say that independents are somehow different than those who align with the Republicans or the Democrats. So when we look at the politics of this issue, they sort of tell us, wait a minute, what politician is going to take political risk here and cut in any meaningful way Social Security or Medicare? All right. Well, then the other thing that you'll see in this sort of discussion as well, you know, both the Republicans and Democrats, they'll never cut spending. People will say that in one breath and then they'll, they'll say, oh, no, my Social Security is in trouble. Well, wait a minute. Which is it? Right. Any reduction in Social Security is a spending cut. So if you're saying the Republicans and the Democrats are never going to cut spending and then saying, well, you're not going to collect all your Social Security, well, you're speaking out of both sides of your mouth, right? Pick one, right? I don't care which one you pick. Pick one. Um, Here's the other thing about that. We say the federal government's got bad finances. Agreed, right? And then we say, well, what they're going to do is they're going to cut two and only two programs. And it happens to be the two most popular programs and the two programs with the most lived experience effect on voters, right? They're not going to cut defense uh, spending in a country most of us have never heard of. No, 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 no. They'll never do that. What they're going to do is they're going to cut spending on programs that directly impact the voter, right, in their pocketbook immediately. What, what are we talking about here, right? So, you know, I do think spending cuts are coming at some point. Uh, I don't think they're going to start with the two most popular, two most impactful federal programs for voters. And then the fourth thing is um, people say, well, you know, the federal government's just going to have debts and deficits as far as the eye can see, and there's nothing we can do about that. I think that's hogwash, right? I'll give you a handful of them, and there are plenty more, right? There's plenty of income tax the federal government just leaves on the table. Things like uh, lightly or non-taxing college endowments, private foundations, hedge fund managers are very lightly taxed. Um, There's these electric vehicle credits. Uh, There's so many things where the federal government could increase taxes on favored constituencies that don't need to be don't need to remain favored. Right. So there's that. And then, you know, I was looking at the campaign website for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And he claims that if America stopped uh, participation in any foreign wars, that alone could make Social Security solvent for 30 years. And these are just a handful of ideas. And they're none of this is mutually exclusive. Right. So there are plenty of ways to attack this problem. And when I when I look at wait, wait a minute, we have plenty of ways to attack the problem of Social Security and Medicare shortfalls, not running out of money. And we say, what's the political risk to the politicians? Right. The political risk to the politicians is so great on this issue um, that, you know, they will face their own early retirements if they ever dare materially in any substantial way cutting Social Security, when you look at those two things, you say, well, in our own financial planning, Social Security is a pretty solid thing. Is that a risk-free judgment? No, right? There's always downside risk, right? Do I get everything right in life? No, just ask my wife, right? But here's the thing. We have to look at the political risk to the politicians when we think about our own future Social Security. And my belief is that most Americans will collect their benefits. You know, they have to do their own claiming strategies, of course. But based on their claiming strategies, they will collect something like 100 cents on the dollar on Social Security. But what do you think? You get to be the judge and jury in the comments. Please let me know uh, below in the comments what you think. If you like this video, please smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.